for this next example, we're going to put our knowledge of the normal curve through its paces. And this is all based on that table of properties and definitions of the normal curve, its symmetry, its center, and things like that. We're not going to use later calculation entries. So normal CDF and inverse norm, which you don't even know what those are. Those are from section 7.2, but you don't need them to be able to do this problem. You can do it all based off of simple logic and symmetry. So this normal curve that's drawn here has a mean of 55. It says it right there. So that center line is at 55. And we were asked a whole bunch of questions. Now remember, capital P like that means probability. So we're being asked to find the probability. And probability is area. So probability, which is area. They're one and the same for this normal curve. So this first question is saying, what's the probability that x is greater than 55? Well, we already answered that. That's in the table, right? 55 is in the center. The whole curve makes one. So that has to be a half, 0.5, based on just logic. So this is 0.5 or 50% or one half. We actually already said this answer as part of that list of information about the normal curve. All right, now what about the probability that 55 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 62? That's this zone that I just actually highlighted in green. However, it was already kind of colored in gray ahead of time, but it's right there. So that'd be 0 0.2123. So 0 0.2123. It's nice when they ask a question that they've already given the answer to. So it's just this zone right here. All right, easy enough. What about the probability that x is greater than 62? All right, greater than 62, here's 62. So greater than 62 is from 62 over and underneath that curve. So it's this whole zone over here. Now how would we find that area? Well, remember from 55 all the way over, we just said was 50% or 0.5. And this little green zone right here is 0.2123. So if that's 0.2123, can't we take that away from 0.5 and we'll know what this orange zone is? And indeed, that's what we're going to do. So we take 0 0.5 and we subtract away 0 0.2123 and we end up with 0 0.2877 and I can even label it on the curve. This orange zone right here is 2877, right like that. So far the first three were pretty straightforward and simple. But what about 48 is less than x which is less than 55? So what in the world, where is this 48 coming from? That would be the first question you should be thinking of. So notice, and we'll make it just a note over here. What's the distance right there between 62 and 55? 62 take away 55 is 7. Right? So this is 7 away right here. So then why not make a companion on the other side? Same height, same distance, that is also 7 away. Mm hmm? seven away that way. What would that new number be? What's 55 take away seven? That would be 48. And that's where the 48 is coming from. Right there. Which means we now have two fresh zones to color and shade. Let's see here. I'm going to make this one pink. And then I'll make the one next to it blue. All right. So the question they're asking is, what's the probability that 48 is less than x, which is less than 55? So what they're really asking for is, what's the area of the pink zone? Uh, but the pink zone is symmetric to the zone we already have. So I'm having some problems coloring here. There we go. Got it all colored in now. Or mostly. <laughs> Good enough. All right. So this zone right here is symmetric. Because of symmetry, it also has to be 0.2123 because that's identical to this zone.
So that answers your question right here. This is 2, 1, 2, 3 because of symmetry. It is the same zone as the green zone that they gave us to start out with. That's where the 48 came from in the first place. So the 48 makes this zone symmetric to this other zone right there. So 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3. Both zones are 2, 1, 2, 3. Now, if you're thinking, well, what about that other zone, the blue zone? Isn't that also 0.2877? Oh, yes, it is. Because of symmetry, this has to be the same. So once you find these two, then you can also find its comp their companions. All right, which is convenient for us because, hey, the probability that x is less than 48 is 0.2877. Again, by symmetry, it should be the same value as the orange zone over here. So less than 48 is right over here. All right, now let's really get into something good. The probability that x is less than 48, that's the blue zone, or greater than 62, that's the orange zone. And you'll notice it had a nice word in there, or, which we know from chapter 5 means we're going to add. It's the addition rule. They're disjoint, right? Either you are in this zone or you're in this zone. So you're going to take 0.2877 and add to it another 0.2877. which will get you 0.5754, but if you don't believe me, 0 0.2877 plus another 0 0.2877. In other words, 0 0.2877 times 2 is 0.5754. Like that. All right, now what about the probability that x is between 48 and 62? All right, between 48 and 62, here's 48, here's 62. Being between those two is these two zones, 2, 1, 2, 3, and 2, 1, 2, 3. So you just add them up, right? Because either you're in the pink zone, which is 0 0.2, 1, 2, 3, or you're in the green zone, which is another 2, 1, 2, 3. And together, those would make 0 0.4246. All right, last one. What about the probability that x is less than 62? Now, there's two ways you can do this. Here's 62. You can either add up these three zones, the blue, the pink, and the green. That's fine, right? So we can say this would be 0.2877 plus 0.2123 plus another 0.2123. We can do it this way. Or, I would not actually do it that way if I was going to do this. I would take 1 and subtract away the orange zone. Because if you're less than 62, you could be one of these three. But if you're not less than 62, you're this orange zone right here. So that would be 0.2877 taken away from 1. These two numbers will both be the same. Let me prove it to you with a calculator. All right. So 0 0.2877 plus 0 0.2123, enter, 1 minus 0 0.2877, see, they're the same. So either way you want to find it is fine. And if you're thinking, hey, this problem wasn't so bad, it really isn't. All that's required is that you have to fill out the curve. Find this other value wherever that may be, and you can actually figure out the area of each of the sections, and then you can answer all the questions below rather simply. Now, there's one other thing to note before we go away from this page. You'll notice, sometimes I said less than, sometimes I said less than or equal to. Why doesn't it matter? Right, because it doesn't. And the reason is because the actual or equal to has zero probability. The lines themselves have zero probability. They don't mean anything. They don't add anything. So that's why I can say greater than or less than or equal to or less than and it doesn't make any difference. So we'll just remind ourselves, note, in a continuous distribution,
um, well, I guess I'll put this way, um, less than and less than or equal to are the same. And greater than and greater than or equal to are the same for probability, I should say. It's because it's continuous, right? The probability that X is equal to a specific value is zero. Right? So it doesn't matter whether you include it or not because it has no probability to add. So it doesn't make any difference. <clears throat>